Hello everybody, I'm Shitanshu from Dream Abroad and in this video we're going to talk about Canadian citizenship. Many people have been asking me to make detailed video about it. So yes, this video is a complete guide to apply the Canadian citizenship. So to start with, we'll talk about the eligibility criteria just to ensure that you apply for the citizenship only when you make sure that you're eligible. Then after that, we'll talk about the documents, which all documents would be required. I'm sure there would be many curious questions here as well. So we'll talk about them and then Finally, we'll talk about the step-by-step -step process. In 2021, they started this as an online process. So we'll go through the complete online process and see how you can actually apply the Canadian citizenship on your own without the help of any consultant or immigration lawyer. Just a quick disclaimer, as many of you already know, I'm not a consultant or an immigration lawyer. I'm purely sharing this from my own experience, from my own research how I applied for my own Canadian citizenship application. Okay, so let's start this video with the eligibility criteria. First of all, it's very important to ensure that you're eligible to apply for the citizenship or not. So to become a Canadian citizen, you must be a permanent resident, have lived in Canada for three out of five years, have filed your taxes, passed the citizenship test, and prove your language skills. So the first point here is pretty obvious. Before having the citizenship, you should have the Canadian PR. Then you must have lived in Canada for three years out of last five years. They will calculate it also. So we'll talk about this point in very detail when we talk about the step-by-step -step process. Then if it is applicable to you, then you must have filed your taxes as well. Once you've submitted the application, then they would need to talk about the citizenship test so this is not something that you would do upfront. Once they request you to do so, then only you'll go for the citizenship test. And also you need to prove your language skills, but you don't need to worry about it. You don't need to appear for IELTS or any other test. Once again, we'll talk about it in the next section when we talk about the documents. Of course, different people might have different circumstances and different scenarios. So if you want to check your eligibility on the Government of Canada's website, so you can come on this uh, page. I'll provide the link to this in the description below. So it asks you a series of questions. Have you been a permanent resident and physically been in Canada for at least three out of five years, which means 1095 days? It says yes. If you say no, then it would ask you different questions, but I'm just choosing uh, yes here. In the last five years, have you been outside of Canada for more than 730 days? Uh, I would say no. Have Canadian officials advised you to leave Canada? So no. Uh, I mean, I'm just giving you an example. The answers could be different for you. So I'm just uh, choosing no here. So now it asks about the language test. So I'll say that I'm between 18 and 54 and I have a proof of uh, language test. In the past five years, have you been required to file income tax? So I'll say yes. Did you file it? Yes. So it says that you probably meet the requirements to apply for Canadian citizenship. But it might be different for different people. So you should choose that criteria, which is applicable to you. So let's talk about the list of documents that are required. So of course, your passport is the most crucial document. You have to submit the scan of all the pages where there are stamps or any visas or any sort of information about you. Then the online physical presence calculation printout. So this is very crucial. This was exactly what I was talking about earlier. We will see that calculator as well and how you can actually generate this printout. We'll talk about it in detail. And the proof of language test. So as I told you earlier that you don't need to go for IELTS or CELPIP or any French test, then there are high chances that you would have already appeared for one of the tests. So the result of that test would work. You don't need to go for a new test. And the two personal IDs, it could be your PR card, your driving license or any other valid photo ID. Then the fee receipt. So you need to do the payment upfront and upload the fee receipt in your application. Then after that, police certificate. So I've highlighted this one because it's not mandatory for everyone. Only if you have stayed out of Canada for more than six months in a row, then you need to submit the PCC for that country. For example, you were living in US, you did a soft landing. After becoming the Canadian PR, you moved back to US. And then after one year, you moved to Canada. 
In that case, you would need the police certificate for US. Similarly for India or any other country. There are some other optional documents that might be required and we can talk about it in the next section. I'll show you the complete application package. My motive through these videos is not to spoon feed you but to enable you so that you can help yourself apply for any of these applications. So as I told you that it's an online process. So let's talk about the step by step of that online process. Okay, so this is the complete portal for Canadian citizenship. You can actually find out the eligibility details. We have already talked up all about this. So I won't talk in detail about all of this once again. But yeah, it uh, actually, you know, lists out all the details about it. So if you're interested, you can go through it. Next, it gives us the option how we can actually apply either online or on paper. So it gives us another questionnaire if we can apply online or not. We'll go through that. But before that, I want to quickly walk you through this complete application package. If you want, you can actually apply it through paper application as well. And of course, the details for that are also mentioned here. It's a lot easier if you go for the online application. So if you are eligible, I would insist that you should go for the online application only. But the details for the paper application, for example, the address where you have to send the mail, everything has been mentioned here in this page. Next, after you apply, what will happen after that? So it gives us a series of questions once again. Did you apply online? So I'll say online here. Then let's say for myself, then do you have a representative? No. So now it gives me the details what would happen after I apply. So if you applied online by yourself and don't use a representative, then we would get the AOR through an email right now in the end of uh, 2022 when I'm making this video. The processing times for the AOR are approximately two months. Back in the month of March when I applied, it was around one month. But it might depend when you're watching this video. The processing times might definitely be different. But if your application is complete, then you would get the AOR. If your application is incomplete, they would return the application to us. All the regular stuff. And once we complete the application, they would send the AOR. Once we have received the AOR, then after that, we just need to wait for a lot of months actually it's a long wait before we get the request for citizenship test then you need to prepare for the citizenship test the day you get the email you'll have three weeks after that to prepare for the test and of course clear it as well you'll find the pdf over here maybe i'll make a different video on the citizenship test but this is just the overall process that i wanted to walk you through then after that there would be an oath of citizenship and the ceremony of course after this you can apply for the Canadian passport and things are done. Overall, this process takes around 26 months at the moment, which is more than two years. But I've seen many people for whom the process got completed in around an year. But yeah, this was the overall process. Now let's see if we can apply online and how to do that. So first of all, it would give us a series of questions again to confirm if we can apply online or not. So if we say that we haven't got a valid email address, then it would straight away say that apply online. So I'll probably choose all those options which are valid for applying online, which means I have to select yes here. Are you permanent resident? I'll say yes. Would you be at least 18 years of age when you submit your application? So I'll say yes. If you're applying for yourself. So if you're applying for your family members as well, then maybe you should select no here. It would ask a series of different questions, but in this particular case, I'm just choosing yes here just for myself with no representative. I have lived for more than 1095 days in the past five years. Of course, you should actually check it through the calculator before even starting this, just to ensure that you have lived more than 1095 days physically in Canada. Then it asks about the crown servant. So I'll say no, again, no here to this question. And then it gives me that yes, you can apply online. So now it's a completely different portal, which is there for the citizenship start the online application when i click on this if i say i agree of course i would encourage you to read all of these before actually uh, you know going ahead to create your account once you start this application you'll get 60 days to complete and submit it however it should not take you more than a couple of days so if you say i agree continue to create an account now this is a completely new portal so here you can actually create your own account so now you have to create your account by giving the email address and the password which should fulfill all of these conditions. I created a demo, a test account uh, and I'll just give 
a certain password here. So just create your account. Now it will give you a verification code. So this is the email. And I got the verification code here, 662533. Confirm code. So now the account has been created and it asks me to log in. So I will log in again. Okay, now it asks for a series of details that you have to fill here. So this is a completely new portal that they have uh, launched just a year ago. So you have to fill all the details here and of course none of the details could be incorrect. So in which language would you like to receive the service? So if you want English, I mean I'm just selecting certain values here and it would be different for you. So please don't hesitate to select a particular value. I am just choosing random ones here. Special needs requiring accommodation, let's say no, a UCI number. So of course you need to provide some UCI number, whatever was mentioned in your COPR. So you need to go back to check that in your last application. I'm not sure if that is also mentioned on the PR card as well, but yeah, you can check that. Then of course you need to mention the last name. I'm just putting in some random names here. So I'll say no because uh, generally most people haven't changed their names. Have you ever used any other name? I'll say no. Gender male. Do you want to change your gender for a citizenship application? I'll say no. I and mean, whatever your height is, I'm just giving a random number here again for each and everything. Maybe it will say brown, uh, date of birth. Then after that, you corrected your date of birth. No, place of birth. So just giving random names here. Okay, I'll say India, marital status. So if you're married, I'll just select this one. So the contact info, you know, if you are selecting an RCC representative, then it will ask for all the details. So I'll select no here. The next, again, now it is asking for the photo and identification. So you have to give one digital citizenship photo, which is very essential here. So the photo has certain criteria. If you're in Canada, you go to any store, maybe Walmart or Staples, they know the citizenship format the exact format for the photo but even if they are not aware you can tell them that this is the criteria and you need a digital photograph to upload it here uh, you know whatever you want to write here i'm just writing all the random things here choosing just randomly anyone when was the photo taken so of course as i told earlier you need to provide two photo ids the first one being any of these two so by a page of your passport of course you should have your passport uh, i would assume that by now so you can select the passport and provide all the details here. Secondly, you can actually add a driver's license, health insurance card. I'm sure you would have certainly all of these documents. So maybe you can select this here, upload your driver's license and move on next. Then it would ask you other questions about residency and your tax. So now you have to complete your physical presence calculation. So this is the page where you actually go on to complete your physical presence calculations uh, it has all the details mentioned here I won't go into too much details I'll just enter random dates here so the first one is when you will sign the application so mind it it's not the date when you have started filling up this application you have to assume some date if it's one week from now you can enter that and if you're not sure then you can enter today's date so maybe I'll enter some random date here now you have to enter the date when you became the permanent resident of Canada so you'd find this date on your PR card. So it's better if you actually go back and uh, you know check that out. I'll just enter a random date here, 2017. Let's save it. Now it will ask you to log in again. So here you see that it has given an error. So this portal now is a different one. This account that you have to create once again is to pay your fees online to view your payment history and to see how long you have been physically present in Canada. So of course this is a test account and I have never created such an account before. In the other portal, I'll just click on register and open it in a new tab. Now here, you know, this the email address is here. I just click on next and probably give another password here. So now it's giving me a registration Recovery questions and answers. No, it seems it didn't accept what I put it here. It didn't like it. I need to enter more detailed values. So I'll just put it again. Click on continue. Now it is complete and it would have sent another verification code. So if I go on to this one, 
it has created another application code 980580 click on verify and now this is confirmed so i click on continue and uh, i have to save this calculation so you can give any name so you can say you know pr calculation click on continue so now it has been saved as pr calculation i think the spelling is incorrect but please uh, forgive me for that i'll just click on calculate again now it will ask me did you spend time serving a sentence for an offense between the two dates you entered so most probably for many people it would be no but please select the right option for you i'll click on continue did you leave canada between this and this so probably if you're talking about a timeline of 3 years most people would have left the country maybe to visit their home country or some other place so you can give yes here so that's why i'm just giving yes and then you have to list out all those places where you actually left out so let's say you know i want to choose uh, india here i'll choose india then when you left so maybe i'll say okay i left on first and then i came back on on the 12th so which means that i was away for 10 11 days reason you know visiting family or whatever your reason may be right so you can add that absence here and then in this way it will actually calculate that how many days have you been in canada so this is the list of absences if you want to add more you can add more maybe let's say you went to antigua for for a vacation so let's say from a random date i'm again giving here let's say for one week you were for a vacation so i'm just giving this dates here keep adding and it will actually calculate number of days you were absent from canada so once you save it you can calculate it and now it has given you the complete list of days that you were away from canada so basically what you need to do is that you need to print this page so basically this is the print out that i was talking about you just need to save this as pdf and upload it in the other application so here the pdf that we generated from the physical presence calculator you have to upload that pdf over here and then provide the right date so this is the eligibility end date the day before you submit your application so please make sure i'm just putting random dates here but please make sure that you make sure that these dates are absolutely correct and in sync i'm just giving random dates so you know so some of them might be out of sync as well for crown servant i'll say no uh, you know addresses now i'll give uh, all the addresses that you have lived inside and out of canada during the last 5 years so i'll just give you know one address only so i've given a random address here and said that i've been living here uh, since the starting and the police certificate so in the past 4 years were in a country or territory other than canada for 183 days or more in a row so many people have this questions that okay i was uh, maybe in the past 3 years i have been in my home country for 6 months or maybe 7 months do i need to submit the police certificate so here in a row is the most crucial part your complete stay outside of canada should be in one go not in different pieces so if the answer is yes for you you just select yes here it will ask for uh, the country and you would need to upload that the country certificate as well i'll say no here so that it doesn't ask me that uh, do you have a social insurance number most certainly you would need one so i'll just put random value again here tell us when you filed your income taxes in the past 5 years so whatever is the case with you of course you need to give all of that a lot of questions regarding cra so basically they are taking this consent from you that they can get the information required from cra so you'll say yes now the next question is about the immigration or citizenship status please provide the answer that applies to you i'm just giving no to both of them so it makes my journey in this demo quite simple now here you have to add the work school and activities so in the past 5 years if you have studied worked whatever you have done in the past 5 years you need to add that here so i'll just give random details here uh save activity click on next now provide all the details that are applicable to you now this is the prohibition section so i'm just selecting everything as no here but again please do not follow what i have to say please follow whatever applies to you now you have to check this box and then click on next 
mind it i haven't provided some of these details here uh, where i haven't uploaded some documents or something else that's why i don't see these check marks next to these sections but once you provide the complete information over there you'll see similar check boxes in each of these sections as well now it comes down to the proof of language for english or french let's see what do they actually say that they have to accept so couple of conditions here if you have completed your IELTS or CELPIP or any French test during your PR application for Express Entry or uh, even any PNP, then that would be accepted here. That's totally fine. And the eligibility criteria is CLB4, which is quite low. So you don't need to worry at all. But apart from that, it has also given some other options that did you study or do you attend a secondary or post-secondary program in English or French? If you did send a copy of proof that you completed or are attending a program with your application proof can be your diploma your transcript and your certificate so these are the options but i believe most of you would have the ielts certificate so you can upload it here but clicking on this drop down you'll see there are so many options not just the ielts general but you know there are other certificates that you can do just in case if you didn't come through express entry maybe you had pausal application in that case there are many other options that you can choose even the secondary education english or the letter from an institution where you're working everything of that sorts would work but i'll just select ielts general training from this list of course i have to upload that certificate here and then only it would select that check here once this is done then it asks for certain authorizations your consent so i'll say yes to all of them please do select all what applies to you then click on next now it asks for some other documents as well maybe you can upload your pr card or some other document so this portal is same as where you created your account for so you go here and you, of course you need to pay the fee you have to select the right option so let's say you select citizenship click on continue so it will ask you if it is for one person for two people if you say one person you have to pay six thirty dollars um, then you click on submit basically you log in and pay now because i was already logged in it is not asking me to log in into this portal again and then once you make this payment through the card then that fee receipt would be generated which you can actually use to upload here and then finally you will need to review it and submit it so it's not giving me that option to submit because I didn't complete some of the sections and also didn't upload any of the documents. But once you do it, you should be definitely able to complete it. So guys, this was the complete step-by-step -step process of applying your Canadian citizenship. And as I've given the disclaimer right in the starting of the video, I'm not an immigration lawyer or a consultant. So this is not a legal advice. Personally, this was the complete process that I have been through for my application. And mind it, at this stage, in November 2022, I'm still waiting for my citizenship test. Really hopeful that I get my citizenship sometime in 2023. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I really hope that this video would be helpful. If yes, please click the thumbs up button. If you have any questions or queries, please put them down in the comment section below. And yes, do not forget to click the subscribe button as well.